ON17 P42Q8. This is an explain explain kind of question that a lot of people don't know what to write for. You'll check the examiner report. A thin slice of conducting material is placed uniform to many few IR. Same setup lah. Okay, but well, they didn't say semiconductors, so they say conducting material. So I could assume that the majority charge carriers will be electrons. So ease. So if I say current is flowing this way, and probably kind of out that way as well, current. Then I can say, oh, then the electron all coming in, oh, this way, direction. B, with some velocity. And because of that, something will happen when they enter the magnetic field. Okay, we will save that for later. Let's explain first. First one, magnetic field is normal to phase C, D, E, F, and phase P, Q, R, S. Ah, they're describing the diagrams. Current the slice is in a certain direction. A potential difference is developed across the slice. State the phases between which the Hall probe, a uh, Hall voltage is developed. Between which two phases? Oh, so we have to go back here and wait, 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 wait. So now see. So which two phases will the, will there be a voltage? Well, if you say it's a conductor and the electrons are coming in this direction, so electrons will experience a magnetic force in this direction. So, I mean, even if you didn't know that fact, you will know that there would be charges gathering all, a lot of them on this side. And a lot of other, another charge, don't know why, is it positive or negative, on the other face. So this is what we call on which faces. If you want to color it, sure. The first one would be here, this face, and the second face would be down on this other side. So usually in uh in this kind of past year, we want to describe the faces, right? We don't say left side, right side. No, no, no. Use the alphabets. You see all these alphabets they give you? CFPS. So this is what we call CFPS. And this side we call DERQ, also can. As long as you talk about the alphabets. So let's write that down. Where will there be a Hall voltage potential difference? You can say CFPS or CFSP and also DERQ. Dirk. Is that Dirk? Dirk. Yep. <laughs> okay. There's just one mark for this. So you need to be able to recognize which side will the Hall voltage develop. Okay. One side magnetic field come in. The other side electric field. Oh, uh, sorry. Uh, this side current is going already. So the third side must be where the Hall voltage uh, develops across. Right. Now the explanation. Hoo -hoo -hoo. Four marks. Look at this big four right here. My, my, my. Explain why a constant Hall voltage is developed between the faces you have named. So what they are asking here, there are two things. The first thing, constant Hall voltage. Why is it constant? Huh? And how did it even develop in the first place? You got to talk about the whole process. So if you watch the theory video before this, um, you will kind of know the whole steps. It's a whole fill in the blank process. You got to write almost everything, but maybe in a shorter form. So how are we going to describe this? What happens? Step one, charge come in. Okay. Now, let me, let's rub it off. Let's, let's go back again to the beginning. Step one. Okay. Break it down. Rub all this off. Okay. Let's say uh, we want to look at N type, so negative charge coming in this way. Okay, charge enter there. What happened? Is this gonna go in a straight line? No, magnetic force. So you have to say the important thing this charge is gonna to start to move because you are in a magnetic field. So we gotta talk about that first. Number one, let's write that down. Charge carriers. We, we don't know whether they are, they didn't, we didn't say electron or, or hole, so we just say, we call them charge carriers. So charge carriers uh, have a velocity, or they are moving with a, a velocity that is normal to be, or perpendicular. Normal means perpendicular. Lah. Normal to the magnetic field. Okay, so what I mean is pretty much something like this. Lor. You come in. Then you got magnetic field like that. So you can use your Fleming's left hand rule. Ah, normal to be law. So, so this is number, point number one. So, what happens if normal? So they experience a magnetic force. Gotta state the obvious. So they experience a, I'm gonna shortcut and say magnetic force. 
which direction generally you can just say it is normal to B and I. Normal means perpendicular. So which is basically your Fleming's yeah describing your Fleming's left hand rule. Lah, okay. If you have a uh, B in one direction, current in this way, you have a force in up direction and all these are perpendicular to each other which is your left hand rule so you describe it in sentence this is how it looks like okay so they got a force now what happened so we draw <laughs> we add to the diagram okay now you know a eh, got magnetic force pull you this way so all these charges will start to collect on one side of the plate so i'm gonna use orange lah. okay so now nah, collect 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 whatever charge there is charge carriers Collect, collect, collect one side of the plate. And because they're separated from the other side, so this side also have flow. Okay, so charge gonna collect on either side. Let's talk about that next. So, point number three. Mm. So, charges that have collected. You don't have to say the surface. I guess you could say, like, next is up there, you already say charges on. C, F, S, P, or D, E, Q, R. They collect there. Right? And what happens when they collect there? They create electric field. Oh, so they create an electric field. Field, field, sorry. Field. Across the slice. And this electric field can be measured. So, with a measurable potential difference. Measurable potential difference. And this is known as our beloved Hall voltage. Ah. Okay, so step one. Charge move. Gather there. Create electric field. And then have a potential difference. So that means... There we go. Now you got a potential difference. Uh, maybe here is, I don't know, negative one. I just create number only. Uh. Negative 10, uh, 10 mu volt. Then on this side is positive 10 mu volt. So your potential difference will be from here to here 20 mu volt, something like that. Okay. That's just what I mean, potential difference. Now the electric field, how to draw leh? Electric field, you remember, is from positive to negative. So if one side got a lot of positive, 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 and the other side got a lot of negative, 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 negative. And these are kind of gathered there. So your electric field you can draw is like this. Oh electric field like a parallel plate like that ah okay draw parallel plate okay so electric field is going to be kind of pushing them that way okay next so what happened now ah? that's the end already yeah hey, hey, hey not yet not yet we have talked about how it developed a hall voltage that's the end of this first part but we haven't say why the hall voltage will be constant hall voltage will increase yes but why is it constant why does it become constant that's the last part we need to talk about. So we will say the charge will stop building up. They won't move there anymore. Okay, why? You need to explain. So we say charge stops building up when the magnetic force acting on the particle is the same as the electric force acting on the particle. And that is when you have a constant Hall voltage there so this is a short form version of the whole story lah what is changing so if you want to draw a picture and add it up uh, you can think of it this way let's put e down there e electric field strength okay so the story is particle originally come in but then it will experience a magnetic force pushing it to the left. But over time, because of this electric field strength, now we also experience the electric force this way. So if balance now, then it will just go in a straight line. Okay, I don't need to gather anymore. I just continue my happy journey. I won't go to the left. I won't go to the right. Balance. Nice and balance. Okay, so this is how you can think of both forces. Lah, right? Uh, yeah. Okay. So that is the whole story. First, Make sure you talk about how the Hall voltage is created. And then you must also talk about why is it constant. Oh, because no force, so no more charge will move around. 
four marks, where do these come from? I've kind of split it into four sections for you already. So first one is you talk about charge carrier. Uh, yeah, you talk, you talk, about, talk about the direction of all these arrows, FBI, where are they? And talk about the force. Okay, they experience a magnetic force that will push them around. Then you can say that the charges will collect and create an electric field or a measurable vo hall voltage. And last part, you must say the charges will stop building up when the hall voltage constant. The condition is FBFE. No net force, go in a straight line. Mm, four marks. Wow, this one, if you look at the error report, the Cambridge has a lot to say about this. So I refer you to go read it. I'm not going to put it here. Last one. Okay, two slices have similar dimensions. Oh, remember we talked about dimensions in the previous example? If we say similar dimensions, means they have the same T. One is metal, the other may is semiconductor material. Oh, different material. So you can say different... Hmm, what's the property of material? N. Number density. Because N is a property of a material. For the same value of magnetic flux density and current, so same B, sorry, B and I. Same B, same I. Let's write that down here. Same B and I. State which slice will give a larger Hall voltage. This is similar to the example we look at. So you kind of have to remember your Hall voltage equation. How do you calculate Hall voltage again? We derived it in the previous example. And the Hall voltage can be calculated from product of, uh, depends on magnetic field and current. Stronger magnetic field, strong, bigger current, then the Hall voltage very big. But also NTE. And these are properties of the charge carriers or the material dimension. So we see what is same. Uh, we put a box over it. Ah, it's a lock in the box that it cannot change already. So B and I is the same. It's not changing. Uh, same dimension, so thickness is the same. E is kind of just constant E, 1.6 uh, times 10 to 90. So this one is constant. All that's left is VH and N. So the relationship between these two is that VH is inversely proportional to the number density. So they are different material, right? They already say ma different ends. So some have to talk about that. So we need to explain our reasoning. Which one will have larger Hall voltage? Ah, so you must say, oh, if N is small, then VH is B. Inversely proportional. Mm, okay, okay, okay. So we need to describe that. Which one will give uh, large voltage? So first we talk about the relationship. Since, I will shortcut again and run the equation. Since the Hall voltage is inversely proportional to number density. So write in the sentence. La. Okay. So sentence will look something like this. There. Write the whole thing. So it's based on the idea that VH proportional to 1 over N. Since Hall voltage is inversely proportional. So which one got higher number density? Yeah. Or which one got a smaller number density? We want this. Is it the conductor or the semiconductor? Well, it's a fact. Semiconductor uh, has a much... Semiconductor has a much smaller N compared to metals. Or kind of generic conductors. Lah. Okay, so we can say that as our final sentence. Just two marks, right? So we can say... Semiconductor, conductor, will have a larger Hall voltage because it has a lower number density compared to metal. Wow, very complete sentence eh. Well, it's good to be safe. Just write out everything. Make sure you don't lose any marks. Think of it from all perspectives. So I, I'm pretty convinced. Okay, I got my working. I got my write-up. Let's see where the two marks come from. The first one comes if you know the relationship between Hall voltage and number density. So this whole part. How they're inversely proportional and things like that. Then the last one. Uh, semiconductor will have a larger Hall. Because it has a lower number than C. So that's the next part. Idea, Talk about semiconductor properties. How do you know which one is which? Okay. So whoo, that is your semiconductor thing. 
make sure you know how to describe, especially, oh my goodness, so many people died at this part because they don't know describe what but didn't answer the question or something like that. But describing is a very big part in paper four. So make sure you know what they are looking for. You know how to detect what they are trying to ask. So go try this out. Okay, so in the last last two examples, we'll see, we'll look at a, a calculation example and also a graph example. Another one where it's just gg.com for a large population. Okay, so that's all for this question. I will see you in the next video.